because my soul does magnify the Lord. Amen. This is where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You know, where God is, there's freedom. Amen. He'll give us utterance and words that we can get against it, no resist. Amen. He will edify our soul. He will increase our knowledge. He will assure us up. So the Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I mean, you can't see it. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You know, that word which is in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the words were with God, amen? amen? So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, amen? For no man has seen God at any time, but the Son of God, he declares some, amen? Yes, Lord. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. And the word says that now the blood of Christ speaks more better things than the blood of Abel. For Abel's blood cried for vengeance, but Christ's blood calls for mercy and grace, amen. amen, amen. So by faith, Enoch was translated through that he should not see death. It was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Think about yourself. What would be your testimony today if you were to expire, amen? What would men say about you? Think about that. But without faith, amen. But without, without faith. Let's all see it. But without faith. But without faith. It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. That he's rewarded of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Yeah, I have a commentary out of here and there at the Lord. Leave me, amen. Just excuse me. Amen. But he says, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. So if you come to God, amen, you must believe there is a God. Yeah. So if you have faith of a mustard seed, that's enough. Because why ask a God for help who you don't believe in, amen? Right. So, if you, so if, you, if you want more faith, you already have that faith. Yeah. But the very fact that you're asking God for faith, amen. This is by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, for prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. And see, Abel, see Noah, with him, it took Noah a hundred years to build that ark. A hundred years of waiting for God to show up. A hundred years, amen. That's a long time. And our life is yeah, about 70 years. And we want things right now. Since you, we have not strive unto death, fighting against sin. So I say stand in that faith. But I'm, keep, keep, I'm getting distracted. I'm keep on going, amen. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. If you know about Abraham, Abraham lived in Mesopotamia, in Iraq. And God told him to leave his father, everything he known. He wasn't a young man. He was a, a already in middle age. To leave everything he had known, to go to a place he had never seen, never heard about, to travel through a desert, amen, full of wilderness, and lions and demons, amen, that attack you by night. He didn't have street lamps like we have. He didn't have cars that we have or chariots. He had his feet, amen, and he had faith. Yeah, he went and obeyed God, amen. Yeah, we ourselves, we have more than he had. And God says, go, and we're afraid to go. We're like, we're like, Abraham, we're like Moses, we say, Lord, I can't speak. But he says, who made the mouth? I am your mouth. And even now, God gave us Aaron, amen. He gave us his word of God. I'll keep on going. Amen. Amen. I don't want to go here, but I'm going there. Amen. He says, by faith, Abraham sojourned in the land of promise as a strange, as as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the promise. For he looked, let's say he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. He who knew, who he left the city looking for a city. Amen. That doesn't make any sense. He says, he who built everything, says, everything is built by some man. But he that built all things is God. So my point today, I'm still going is, why are we compelled and propelled to serve a God whom we have not seen, who we have not touched physically, 
What causes us to reach out to him, amen? amen. And we're seeing it here. Verse 11 says, through faith, also Sarah, Abraham's wife, herself received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised, amen. amen. Judged him faithful who had promised. This is the same Sarah who when God told her she have a child, laughed. Then God said she was found faithful, amen. See, it's not what it looks like. In your life is not what it looks like. It's not by your faith, amen. It's by his faith, amen. amen. Not by your word, but it's by his word. He says, Job was a perfect and upright man. And what was he? A perfect and upright man. God says what? You are the children of God. You are my heirs. I will dwell in you, and I will walk in you. You'll be my sons and daughters, amen. That's what you are, amen. amen. He says, therefore sprang there even of one. And him, as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, as the sin which is by the seashore innumerable. And we think about Abraham's seed being a physical seed. This is by faith. Are you the children of Abraham? And think about how many children of faith there are that have passed and still live today. Billions. Maybe not billions of billions, amen. Who can number it? Who can count it, amen? But Abraham was a friend of God. And he believed in God, amen. It says, in 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them after all, seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth, amen. What are you embracing today? You know, what are you looking for today? What are you seeking for? You know, I said before, I thought about this before, that... We have a hope that you're going to receive something. Your whole body mobilizes and, con and contracts yourself to receive it. Right. You look for it to come. It's like Christmas. You know a gift is coming. You can't see it. You try to look for it behind the, you know, behind the, the different compartments or where it might be hidden, but you know it's coming. Yeah. And when it's come, you are overjoyed. Yeah. Who is your gift? Who is your presence? Yeah. So I'm saying that about God, amen. Why are we compelled? Why are we appropriate to seek his face? I'll continue. For he says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Christ is what? I go to prepare a place for you. That where I may be, you may also be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. See, he was a man in the flesh. But he's not a man that he should, not, he, that he should lie. See, Christ says, Which one of you can, can declare or appoint a sin enemy? And nobody said nothing. So if he says it's true, then it's true, amen. He said, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came, they might have opportunity, opportunity to return. Like I said before, Abraham left from a city, looking for a city. So really, when he's looking for a city on this earth, it cannot be so. Because he left one. But it says, but now they desire a better country. That is, a, that is in heavenly, where for God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. It says, if we're talking about salvation, I've been told the very streets are paved with gold. I want to live in that city. The streets are paved with gold. I talk about this right here. Streets being paved with gold, amen. Amen. And not that physical gold, amen. Because you are, you know, he's, you are tried in the fire. That you are come forth as pure gold. You are in those streets, amen. We're magnifying God, saying, holy, holy, holy is your name. You know, we're lifting him on up, amen. You know, it's not just, you know, far off. It's right now. Because God gave us that present. We, we look forward to that present. We expect that present, amen. That glorious body, that robe of righteousness, that white robe, amen, without spot, reek, or blemish. We have it today, amen. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And so I ask you, amen, you know, what are we looking for? You know, what propels us? What compels, what constrains us in this love of Christ, amen? Is it us? Because on many days, you know, we don't feel like doing something. You know, we get tired running errands. Think about, you know, I want to do it, but ah, I'll do it later. It says, you know, what you can, um, well, why postpone tomorrow, we can do today. Amen. 
But we, our bodies get tired. Our minds get weary. Our feet hurt, amen. Our corn starts to mess up with this, amen. Uh, yeah, our, our knee is bad, amen. The weather's not good. It's raining outside. I'll do it tomorrow and take a nap. No, no, we, no we, get, we get lax in earthly things. So what compels us is spiritual things. We see it right here. Daily right now. I didn't mean to go here, but I'm going here, amen. But it says this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, of, when he was tried offered up Isaac. And he, had, and he had this. That he received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He who, had the, he who was called the friend of God. He who had the promises of God was even tried, amen. I remember reading the works of Josephus, the Jewish historian. And he says when Isaac was offered up, he asked his father, he says, Lord, where's the sacrifice? You know the word says, God will prepare himself a sacrifice. And then he has a little more commentary where he says, and Isaac says to his dad, you know, Lord, what are you, you know, Father, what are you doing? Because he's binding them up. And he says, well, son, I'm offering you up, in more or less words. Because who am I to resist, you know, God? And his son said, well, Lord, God has blessed you all these years. And God has kept you. Who am I to resist the word of God? Amen. Here was, a, here was a willing sacrifice, amen. And what did Christ say? Christ said, I come to the will of my Father, amen. That may be magnified in him and you and me. So I say, what compels us? What propels us in this faith of God, amen. It is some, just some, some ordinary thing. We go through the rituals, the motions, amen, day by day, magnifying God, saying, Lord, you are holy, 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 but our heart is far from you. you know, is our heart near to God, amen. The worst is examine yourself. Where do you be in the faith? Know you not your own selves, how Christ is in you, except you are a reprobate? See, a fool can, not, can, can lie to himself. But examine yourselves. Take inventory of yourself. Do you see Christ in you? It's rhetorical, man. It's a rhetorical question. But it's provocation to show us that our feet are ordered in righteousness and true holiness. That we have a good heritage. That this is worth something. It has value, amen. And this morning I was going to speak about the virtuous woman. And I'm saying that the virtuous woman has value, as value to her husband. Christ has value to us. Amen. And, it, you know, and, 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 and in economics, they say this. In economics, you know, when they're you know, evaluating a price or a value of a company, they say, well, what is the value added? You know, what, what, what does the name add to it? What does this add to it? What does that add to it? What does Christ add to you? Amen. He has a whole lot. I would say, you know, Yahshua, what does Yahshua add to you? That great and mighty God, amen, who was in the beginning, amen, who was that light that shined in the dark place. Since he came into his own, his own received him not. He was, a, he was shunned by his own people, his own creation. Yet he still pressed forward, amen, as Paul says, toward the high mark of the true calling. That we, who he loved us so much, that despite our shame of him, he honored us. So can we honor him, amen? Amen. Right. amen. Count it all joy, amen. Count it all joy. Yes, Lord. It says this, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him from a figure. See, Abraham received, when he was yet dead in his flesh, received life through Isaac. Amen. Yes, and so yeah, he figured that I'm offering back what God already gave me. That if he die again and God gave me, gave me life the first time, he can give me life the second time. So he was compelled by that life. That life compelled him to honor God, to magnify God. The same thing in us. That life in us, both to will and do of his good pleasure, compels us. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Says, All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It says this, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And that light shined in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. The key word is that, that that light, that very light shined in darkness. But he says what? But as many as received him, or would receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not just back then, even today, even those who believe in his name. And here's the beautiful part. Who were born of what? Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we're all canceled out. Not by our will, 
not by our efforts, not by our own exertions, but by his power, amen. Yeah. And he who and he who, who built it can maintain it. He can sustain it, amen. See, see, I ain't going out there to buy me a BMW because I can't, I can't sustain it. I can't make this BMW. I can't make this a Lexus, amen. Maybe one day, but God can. See, in the God's eyes, we are, we are more than Lexuses. We are more than Ashton Martins, amen. No, we are, he, said, he maintains us and fortifies us, amen. He who keeps the city sustains the city, amen. We are a goodly heritage. So I can't sit on God, amen. I got to magnify his name. Because, see, I'm an Ashton Martin, amen. I'm a Lexus, amen. And I walk in that, amen. Because he's worthy. He's worthy, amen. Yes, he's worthy. I walk in that. I walk in that, amen. So, you know, what are you today? You know, are you using some bent up pinto? I ain't no pinto, amen. <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 it's not about earthly things, amen. It's about spiritual things. You know, he's worthy that we have a, an inheritance in him. So, I don't want to water down the inheritance. I'm not going to water it down. We're not going to water it down. We can't water it down, amen. Yeah. We can't water it down. Come on, come on. You see, we can't bring him down to our standard. Says, if we deny him, he can't deny himself. That's right. All we do is, is, is denying our own self. That's right. He remains faithful to himself and to us. He exhausts, he lifts us up. Man, he, ex he lifts us up. So I say, what compels us? What propels us in this thing of faith? You know, what causes us when the whole world surrounding us to seek his face? And it can't be us. It has to be him. Yeah. He says, that you, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, with our rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. See, in the midst. You're in the midst of it. You're not on the side of it. You're not looking at it far off. You're right in the middle of it. In the midst of crooked nation, he said, but you should you shine as lights in the world. You're in the midst of it, but you're a light. You are a beacon. Hey, Amen. You are that lighthouse. It says, and that men may see your good works and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. But he also in you, Amen. Being radiated outwards. And you see, it says this: the people of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they were worthy as death, just like the Egyptians were. But what separated them was God. And how, and how do we know this? Because God put, a, put that blood over their lampposts. Without that blood, he would have killed them. So it wasn't by their own efforts. It's by God's efforts. Amen. amen. And even in the wilderness, when they're all by themselves, amen, they still want to do what the Egyptians did. Without them being there. And even some of us, without us being around the earthly world, because it's in us, if God's not with us, we'll do the earthly world, and we'll be in Antarctica. Amen. We've been idling all by ourselves, still corrupt, still filthy, still messed up, still perverted in our mind, all by ourselves, amen. But God, amen, with that blood, but God, with that blood, amen. But God, with that blood, put it all over us, amen. Like olive oil, we are drenched in it, amen. God put that blood on us, and he sustains us, and he preserves us, that we are worthy of death because of our sins. Our lying, our cheating, our backbiting, our adultering, fornication, fornicating, filthy, mangling, backbiting, perverse self. God is still faithful, amen. From the babies to the elders, amen. We are worthy of death. He says, all tables are full of vomit. All tables are full of vomit. There's no place clean. Where do we eat, amen, with a place full of vomit? It's like hoarders. No place to sit. But God is still faithful, amen. You know, you know, God take you by, you know, God taking your pamper. You, you know, you know, you're in a, you know, pissing yourself, doodling yourself, and God cleans you up, amen. You think the high heaven, the God who is faithful, he exhausts us, amen. So I say, what propels us? What compels us, amen, to worship this mighty God who is faithful and long-suffering, who could have destroyed us a long time ago, but keeps us around, amen. amen, amen. The word says, what is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? And so the man, that you should, they should consider him. He says, what is man? That he should be clean. And he which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous. Behold, he drinks iniquity like water. He drinks iniquity like water. He drinks sin like water. Now, some of us don't drink water. We drink Kool-Aid or soda or, or Diet Pepsi, amen. <laughs> so, you know, you know, so I'm making a qualifier. 
you know, it's still water. Whatever you drink, amen. You drink more liquor, it's still whatever you drink, amen. It's still water. But God says, what is man? Drink iniquity like water. That's us. You know, that was our heritage. That was our works of righteousness, which is what, which was what the works of the flesh, which was destruction, amen. So now God called us out, and God gave us, you know, this knowledge. He says, well, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The worst is what? For God who commanded who command the light, for God who called the light out of darkness, has shined in our hearts yes. to get the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yes. In the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the express image of God. Yes. See, the express image of God, we think about the express image, you think about what? Your expressions, your behavior, your mannerisms, amen. Your functions, what you see a person do. I know, my, I know you are my about how you act. I know your voice, your behaviors, your mannerisms. See, Christ was the express image of God. When you see compassion, you see him. When you see long-suffering, you see him. Christ walked in compassion. He walked in long-suffering. He walked in grace and truth. Yes. Amen. It says, for, law, it says, for the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's why that's he says this. If any man rejects me and receives not my words, I judge him not. For I cannot to judge the world, but to save the world. Yes. He that rejects me, you know, re you know, have one that judges him. My word, which I have spoken, the saints will judge him in the last day. And what's the word? The word is Moses. The word is the law. The law says this. A man has to continue in the law and do all things in the law. So if you neglect Jesus Christ, you have the law. And with the law, no man can do the law. Amen. So by very nature, you're condemning yourself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But I speak rhetorically because only God can condemn and only God can exalt. Amen. Amen. It says, you know, he without God, we can do nothing. He is our all and all. Amen. So what compels us, this dirt suit, to honor, to honor him and magnify him and glorify him? You know, what with our busy lives, amen, in our full schedules, amen, in our, you know, in our work, in our job, in our distractions, what causes us to keep seeking his face? Amen. I say it's all about him. All about him. Always, it's always been about him, amen. amen. Always been about him. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of the living, amen. See, the qualifier is this. He says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, Jacob, they're dead in the flesh. But he says, I'm the God of the living, meaning they are still alive with him. So that gives us hope that though the outer man perish, we have an earthly tabernacle in the heavens, amen, that cannot be dissolved. We have a lively hope. And that presses us on, to keep us on, amen, to glorify and magnify him. All right, back to the word, amen. Amen. He says, by faith, in verse 21, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning up leaning upon his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he, when he died, made mention of the departing concerning his bones. Amen. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to, to, a, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures for a season. Think about Christ. What did Christ do? He came down from heaven. He became like as we were, to suffer our afflictions, amen. Moses was a figure in the way of Christ. Because Moses gave up his earth, he gave up his, you know, his heritage, his riches, and humbled himself with the people of God. And Christ himself humbled himself to be our savior. That he may know our infirmities. That when we're downtrodden, they may be able to secure us and comfort us and touch us in a way that only he know, amen. Is, is esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. To esteeming the reproach of Christ. See, at that time, Christ wasn't even on the scene yet, but yet he was still manifested. Yes. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover, amen, 
and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And by faith, he went to the Red Sea. And I want to skip a little bit because I want, the point I want to get to is this. It says in verse 32, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me, as time is failing me now, amen, to tell of Gideon, <laughs> to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David, also in Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the fire of fire, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, was valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yet moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they were wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom this world not worthy to be, is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and of caves of the earth. And these all, having not obtained a good report through faith, these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. It says this, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a call of witnesses, let us lay aside every malice, every weight, and sin, so easily beset us, amen. Let us run this race with patience that is set before us. I'm saying this that they in the past they were compelled and propelled by something greater than themselves, yet they didn't receive the promise that God gave us a better thing. And so I'm gonna show you what this promise is. Go let's go to Titus chapter 3. Verse 5. Or verse 4. It says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he did what? Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified, that being justified by his faith, we should be made what? Heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's the promise right there eternal life. And Paul says this, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. See, these things are good and profitable unto men. See, we think that our jobs are profitable, that our actions are profitable, that exercising is profitable. Yet here, Paul says this, these things are good and profitable unto men. So today I tell you before, I come before you telling you is this, that why do you seek God's face? Because God has put a hope in us to seek his face. The God calls us out of darkness into the marvelous light to seek his face. It is God, amen. It might be a light thing, but it's not a light thing. It's God working in us, both the will and do of his good pleasure. Making us profitable in his sight. Making us profitable in his sight. That we could be that great cloud of witness. That we could be a fire, you know, be a fire burnt up, a consuming fire that go out there, amen, and ignite people to the things of God. See, we believe today because somebody believed in the past. Somebody in the past touched somebody else to touch us. We are a link, amen, to the future. We are a link from the past to the future. Amen? Because God used men. So we can't sit down on that fire to provoke you. We can't neglect the things of God. We cannot do it. I believe, I know God will not let us do it, amen. amen, amen. Well, I say this, examine yourselves, whether you've been in faith. Examine yourselves. See your fire. Yeah. If your fire is lacking, ask a him who give to all men liberally and abrade if not. And amen. that, you know, I leave you with that. This is a faithful saying. And these things are profitable and good unto men. Amen. amen.